in the front lines of fighting in Libya. We had our psychosocial tent in the middle of the you know Freedom Square in one of the Libyan cities. And then the freedom fighters came and they found me playing with the children in the tent and they were quite furious. They said, you are fighting age, uh, why don't you come with us to the front line? And I told them, this is my front line, this tent is my front line. I come from Benghazi, Libya. I worked as an ER physician. I was working in the emergency room uh, for about two and a half years before my father told me I have to leave the country because uh, there was uh, most likely orders to get me arrested or thrown in jail. It uh, was a dictatorship, so uh, I used to help families of those that uh, Colonel Gaddafi put in prison. I used to go and provide them with emotional and uh, financial help. And obviously I was labeled as an empathizer, sympathizer, so my father learned that uh, I need to leave uh, immediately. So I had uh, to just say goodbye to mom and dad. I didn't even have time to, uh, you know, say goodbye to my sisters or brothers. And then I have a brother who was in another city, so he went uh, into hiding in his house for about three days. Then he knew somebody uh, at the border, and that guy, he put me in a boat and he said, you never learned of my name, you don't know who I look like, and I wish you best of luck. He went uh, to my uh, home country in 2011, after 12 years of living in exile, and uh, tried to focus on the psychological needs of the country. Um, many people were dismissive because the physical needs were quite prevalent and uh, you know, visible wounds were everywhere, but there are invisible wounds and invisible scars and many people were uh, walking wounded and many people are, you know, bleeding profusely from the inside. I went uh, seven times so far since 2011. Uh, some of my trips were with wonderful NGOs, non-government organizations like Mercy Corps and Helps Work and uh, actually my very first trip, which was in February 2011, was with a local organization called Medical Teams International and they were quite receptive uh, to you know, helping the Libyan people. They donated about half a million dollar worth of uh, medications that they took with me to Libya. My work with the children was uh, quite emotionally draining, but at the same time, that was the most rewarding experience in my life. There are many stories, so um, one that strikes me, for example, is uh, a child who was uh, playing, but it was a very dangerous zone, and uh, you know a sniper decided to, you know, take a shot at him, and uh, unfortunately ended up uh, losing his eye and part of his leg. So he, when we went and met him for the first time, he was uh, quite depressed because he looks different than uh, you know other children, and many people might not feel comfortable around him because he looked different. And uh, we worked with people inside and outside the country to try to expedite his case. And uh, eventually he had an artificial eye and artificial leg. And there's a big smile on his face. We trained, uh, you know, hundreds of uh, therapists, both in Libya and also on the Syrian border. And uh, that continued online too. When I, between my trips, I never lost touch with uh, either Libya or Syria. When I came back to uh, Oregon, I found that the same dysfunction I saw in Benghazi and other parts of um, Libya, and even at the Syrian-Turkish border where I went and volunteered and helped some of the orphans there. The same kind of dysfunction is repeating itself, even though you know the trauma story might be different. It's not necessarily war. I started a small program in Portland, Oregon. We had a child who uh, you know, came to me because he was extremely anxious. And when we talked about his trauma story, uh, he said, uh, the reason is because his father leaves home at six in the morning before the child wakes up and comes home at 12 midnight when the child is long asleep. And this happens seven days a week. And uh, this is very unfortunate. So when we sat down with the father and we said, your child is anxious because he really misses you, uh, the father was quite sympathetic. At the same time, he said, I'm trying to provide for my child. And we said, we need to provide emotionally too, not only materialistically. So in his own way, he was uh, losing the American dream, chasing it. And that uh, is an example that unfortunately 
is not unique. There are many, many stories like that that are happening behind closed doors. Yeah, so one uh, of the uh, parts of taking care of our youth was to establish a youth club. Uh, we called it Sons of Adam. We've been working on this project, alhamdulillah, for a long time, how to do these three activities in one day. So actually, this morning we went and uh, did you know archery and then now we are doing horseback riding inshallah later today we're gonna go swimming then we go to the masjid and stay the night we do what we call qiyam al-layl or the overnight you know prayer and inshallah have a beautiful group of five boys about 28 of them has been fun so far yeah i mean these three are uh, islamic tradition some people uh, say that it is a uh, a common say in Islam to combine horseback riding, archery and swimming at the same time. <laughs> so these events are very important because they make the child feel they don't uh, have to be isolated. So many of our children are overprotected and uh, we also provide them with the venues to you know, mix with the children their age from different backgrounds so they feel comfortable about people of different, you know, uh, races. Dr. Omar is a great guy. Like, he has a lot of involvement in the community, especially with the youth. And he, it's like, it's great. He always organizes things. And uh, I think it's pretty important to have things to bring all the kids together, especially when we live in like a non-mostly Muslim society. So in a way, it's a psychosocial program, but we call it play and art therapy because if you just say psychology, nobody will show up to your event. So we do it in, in a way that's not deceptive, it's rather benign and inviting and non-threatening. And we found lots of uh, positive response from, from children and their parents. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the pilot episode of my brand new series, PDX Muslims, where I'll be bringing you all the interesting Muslim stories around my town. If you like that and you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and I will see you next time.